Hello, welcome back. It's Michael here again um, and we're getting close with our project to a point where we wanted to end up with because we wanted to simulate the spread of a virus in a population to actually get some insight, to get some data, to get some um, results so we can ultimately experiment with what happens when people behave differently and if we want to see what happens. Um, seeing the people run around on screen as we are now is a good start. It's nice to watch. Um, but ultimately to get uh, better data we also want to see some numbers on screen. So we will start now um, generating a bit of data that is counting our infected people and displaying um, the details on the screen. Uh, that's a good start for um, where we want to end up that we can actually analyze what's going on and get a little bit of insight. Okay, back to the code. Last time I promised that the next thing we would do is starting to count the number of infected people. Um, so if we want to count how many people are infected, we can't do that in the person class because the person class is responsible just for a single person. So we need the whole overview over the world so we go to the world class and that is where we can do our counting. So what we, we, how we want to do this is that in every act step we just go through all the people in the world and count how many of them are infected. Um, the uh, methods we have in the world class now is just the constructor, happens just once at the beginning um, and the populate method just gets called by the constructor so we don't have anything yet that happens at every act step. But luckily, just as the actor classes have an act method, here it is, that gets called at every act step, the world class can also um, act like an actor. It can also be called at every act step. So if we have a um, public void act method here, this will get invoked every time um, the simulation performs one act step, just like the actors in the world. Um, so in the act method of the world we can do what we want to do. And as before, remember code quality, cohesion um, and um, naming, that means if we want to count um, the world and display the information about the details of the world, we should give it a name. So instead of writing the code directly in the act method, I will just say um, display info. Um, that is an, a bit nicer. Of course when we have that that is a an error at the moment. I need to create this method. Um, and as always while you are writing code you should write comments. So I say something like um, You can read that. Okay. Um, and here we just do the. Where is it? There. Um, so the question is oh, here I've got an error here. Um, forgot the return type. So the question is how do we do this, displaying the information? Um, it is really just going through and counting. So uh, what I can do is I create here a variable num infected. So that is the number of my infected people. And let's say I initialize this to zero. So we start with zero and then there is just a standard for each loop. So I say for each person p in um, oh, now I need my, my list. So let me just do that first. Let's first get the list of all people. So I have a list of person and I call that people. That's people is my whole list of person. And I can do that by saying get I'm here in the world class and there is a get objects method. So the world has a get objects that allows me 
to get all the objects of a given class. I can specify this which class I want, so I can say I want all just objects of class person, and I will get a, will get a list of that class. So I say get objects of person dot class, um, and that gives me a list of person. This will um, now only work because I have <laughs> I have in preparation already. You will not have that in your code if you have just followed my own, but I have tried that out before. So I have already added an import here at the at the beginning for Java util list. So the this list object that I'm uh, sorry this list um, type that I'm using here. You have to import this uh, first. If you haven't got the import statement, you will get an error here, and then you just need to add the statement there. So I have my list of people, and then I can say for each person p in my people list, do the following. Um, I want to now um, say if that person is infected. And the other thing we have to make sure is that the infected method in my person class is, oops, wrong method, this one here, is infected, that the is infected method is actually public. Um, when I originally wrote this code at first, um, I made it private. So check your own code, whether you have it private. If it is, then you will not be able to access it here. So make sure your is infected method is public. Then you can say, if this is public, then we just count num infected plus plus, which means we increment our number of infected people. So after this for loop, or this for each loop, um, in this local variable here, I have the number of infected people, and I can just display it on screen. The world class in Greenfoot has a uh, show text method where I can just show a string, and I just write the string infected and then append my um, variable. So, and it has an x and y coordinate where I want to put this, so I can put that. The x coordinate is the number of cells from the left edge of the screen. The y coordinate is the number of cells from the top of the screen. So something like this is reasonable. So if I do this, now in every act method, let's see whether I've done that right. I call display info. When I call display info, um, I have the number of infected zero. I get all my people. I count how many are infected. And yeah, that looks reasonable. So let's try that out. I run this. And there it goes. And up here in the corner of the screen, um, I can see the number of infected people. And I can see how it increases and how it decreases. So what I'm really interested in is how many people will be are infected at any one time. So what's the maximum number of people that were infected simultaneously? So what I really want to know is not only the number of infected people right now, but the maximum that I have reached. So let's do that as well. So I introduce also a max infected. So and the number of um, the maximum number of infected people. Oh no! N now we have to be a bit careful. The maximum number of infected people cannot be done as a local variable. It has to be done as a field, um, private max infected, and so the maximum number infected is zero. I'm setting that to zero once at the beginning. Think about it. Um, try to work out why that is, why max infected has to be an instance field, but num infected actually can be a local. Um, uh, I'm sure you can work that out if you think about that a bit. Um, the it is um, important for the functionality that um, this one is a field. If that were a local, if I write int max infected equals zero here, you can try it out if you want. It won't work, it won't do the right thing. Try to work out why that is. We could move the this variable here, num infected, we could move the declaration of the variable here to the top as a field, 
that would work, but we ha would have to reinitialize it to zero here every time because we want to count every time again from zero. Um, moving that to a field would not be quite as nice as it is now because every variable you should typically um, re restrict the scope to the smallest possible scope. That is, you should have it only declared in the bit of code where you actually need it and you should not make it more visible um, than necessary. And since this variable is only needed during this method, it is better as a local variable. So, um, if we want to count the maximum, we just say here, if now our number of infected people, there's a spelling our number of infected people right now is greater than the maximum infected that we've seen before, then we know we have to update our maximum. So then we say max infected is now num infected. So that is a fairly straightforward thing um, to read and to understand. If the number at the moment is bigger than our maximum, then that number is our new maximum. Um, and of course I want to show the maximum now as well, so I duplicate this here and then I say here max and show the maximum number of infected. And I want to show it somewhere else, so I want to not show that at 100. Let's put that at 300, so a bit further over to the right from where we were before. Let's go there again, run this, and there we see it's counting now. Um, and we see that the maximum of infected people that we reached at any one time is 179. That is really interesting because in reality, if you have a real epidemic in a population, the maximum number of people that are infected at the same time is a really important number because in real life, you know, these are the people that may have to be treated in hospital. Um, so the maximum number of people, the question there is in a real society, can your health system cope with this many sick people at the same time? Um, so whenever you think about the uh, modeling of a pandemic, the maximum number of people at a time is really important. And what you would really like to do in a population when you make interventions in a pandemic is you would like to have measures that keep the maximum number of people as low as possible. Even if your whole population eventually will get infected, it would be much, much better if it happens over a longer time and the maximum stays low so that your hospital capacity um, can actually treat the people who are infected right now at any time. Uh, we can try this out again and see um, how this varies because, of course, there is a lot of randomness in our um, simulation. And so the maximum number of people can actually vary from one execution of the simulation to the next. You see now we have 182. If I run that again, reset this, run it again, um, then the next time it may actually go differently. So here it rises now. Um, this time I had only 130. So I was a bit luckier. The maximum number infected is lower now. So sometimes I can be a bit lucky. Um, we can also see if you look at the maximum number, it rises a bit at the end, and then rises really, really quickly suddenly, and then it stops and then it doesn't rise anymore because there aren't so many people to be infected anymore. Um, so it will be really interesting to actually see the graph um, of what the number of infections over time looks like. Um, that might be a nice um, task to do next, but this is enough for today. So play along, um, try it out yourself, let me know in the comments how you get on or whether you have any questions. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.